Welcome to Human or Athlete. Um, I'm so excited to have um, our guest today. We've got uh, ex-Man United, Swansea, and now number 11 at Nacional, Kenji Gori. What a guy. Delighted to have you on here, oh, bro. bro. it's absolute privilege, man. It's my pleasure to be on here. I absolutely love what you're doing. Uh, I listened to Tavongay's episode and, bro, it was literally... Uh, it's my pleasure to be on here today, brother. Bro, it's brilliant. All right, we'll obviously go straight into it. Um, kind of rewinding right back and looking at the beginning and what it was like growing up in football, um, what it was like at Manchester United and the environment and the experiences you had. Yeah, man. Like, honestly, like, looking back at my life, it's just gone so quick. Like, it's just gone so quick. Like, I'm 26 right now and I'm thinking, like, I felt like it was yesterday. But honestly, like, like growing up in the football world, like, my dad was a professional footballer. Like, football was all I knew. Football was literally, like, my life. And football was something that would, uh, this literally one of the only things that would actually really make me happy. You know, just going outside. Like I can remember like getting my dad when he's stiff after training saying, come on, let's go outside, let's go outside. And it's just something that I just love to do. And and then I had the the privilege to go to Manchester United at six years old and, and be there for 10 years. It, it was, it's honestly like looking back, it's such a surreal experience. Like... Just thinking back to the amazing players that I got to play with, to train with, uh, to be around on a day-to-day -day basis, like looking back and embodying that person that I was back then, it's like, it was normal. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just so normal, like going into, into day, uh, in your day and just going to train with, with, uh, with amazing players each and every single day. Like it was just, it was just, it was like home. Mm -hmm. It was like a routine and, and I absolutely loved it. It's literally made me the player and person that I am today. What, what, do you have any kind of like experiences at United, that environment? Because obviously it's such an incredible environment at the club, um, not only mentally, but kind of obviously performance wise. Do you have any experiences that are like kind of in your memory that you can't, you know, forget? Oh, there was one experience where uh, actually Paul Scholes like trained with us. Mm -hmm. So he retired from... Um, from professional football so as he retired he came to train with the reserves and the under 18s like we were literally like with him every single mm. day and that was such a unbelievable experience to to train with him every day and to see how we how much uh it still means to him mm -hmm. you know like this wasn't something like for him like he was like i looked at him like wow like he's poor skulls but like for for me to train with him it was like wow like I get to learn from him. I get to take the things on what he what he did, and and I learned so much from him through that time. And even it got to a point where um, he was uh, there was short in numbers in the first team, and he came back from retirement and actually went back to play. Yeah, so to say, in that time, it? you know, it, yeah, it was just it's just that it was a it was a, honestly like you just asking that question, like it just brought back so many like moments that mm -hmm. I that you that you basically forget. You know, you basically forget and you're living your life now. And, and then I'm like, wow, the experiences that I had, like it's, it's, it's a, honestly, it's a, it's a moment that, that is a real blessing. It's crazy because when he was kind of obviously like part-time manager at Salford, he came in and was like involved in the rondos and stuff. He's unbelievable. He's still got it. Like he's unbelievable. Um, but yeah, and then obviously you went to Swansea and what was that kind of transition like? obviously on the pitch because obviously it's a big move but as well off the pitch as a person cause I'm, I'm assuming you obviously left home and you went out there on your own what was that like honestly it was like it was a heartbreaking experience it was like leaving united being there for 10 years leaving my family my friends like that's all i knew that's who i was i was kenji the united player and now suddenly um who am i mm -hmm. you know it was literally like my identity got ripped away in that moment, you know? And, and even I can just remember like going into Sir Alex Ferguson's room at the time and he shared with me like, Kenji, um, I'm not gonna be giving you a new contract. I feel like I cannot guarantee that you're going to play. And for you, it's gonna be like, I don't wanna keep you here and you not get the minutes. Like I want you to go and go and play. And I know that you will, you have the quality to go and do that somewhere else. And like, it was like, it was like somebody just stabbed a knife in my heart at that time. But then again, like it was like now looking back, it's like that's the best thing that could have happened to me at the time. Mm -hmm. 
you know it's like that has literally made me realize like the reality of football and it also made me realize that i'm way more than a footballer yeah you know i cannot i cannot i cannot in my mind think that this is all this is who i am you know i can remember getting in my course going back home to going back home to, to to my parents and and my girlfriend at the time to to let them know the news and uh, I was driving and I was literally heartbroken. I was crying all the way home. I was like, how am I going to tell them? What am I going to say? Like, I've let them down. I've let my family down, let my friends down. Like, how, how can I get the, the courage to even tell them what's even happened now? Mm -hmm. So I remember pulling up outside. I was like, all right, let's get it together. Let's get the strength. And I opened the front door, knock on my parents' room. And, and I was just like, uh, guys, I've got something to tell you. Um, I've been released from 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 United, and I just can remember like crying my eyes out. Like mm -hmm. it was like uncontrollably, you know, one of them cries where it's like not just it was like <gasps> <laughs> one of them, the one of them, like, the, the real weight. You know when you can't breathe, yeah, you know when you can't yeah. breathe. Them ones you're trying to catch air, but yeah, like I can just remember like that feeling there is it, it was literally just my identity was just ripped away from me mm -hmm. and there's a choice that you have to make in them in that situation you know and my dad gave me a night to to think about it and everything and to really process and the next day he said listen when one door closes another one opens you mm -hmm. know you're at the top the only way is down mm -hmm. and it changed my perspective you know it changed my perspective of how i saw the situation to be and he shared with me he said listen where do you want to go mm -hmm. where do you want to go from here go and look at every single club so what i did what i did was it's crazy i went to look at every single club underneath united no way. looked at how many wingers there were at that club right. and then i was like right that that's a good environment that's a good environment and i can just remember i wrote down three clubs i wrote down swansea everton and i think i wrote down west ham at the time and I ended up signing for Swansea. Yeah. And it was just, it's just crazy. Like me even speaking about this right now and somebody that might be experiencing this right now, like getting told that they're not getting their pro. Like just know that you have the quality, otherwise you wouldn't have got to where you are today. But just also know what you want. Mm -hmm. You know, when when that one door closes, for you to for you to know what door is coming next, you've got to actually know what you desire as well. Mm -hmm. So it's like really going out there, like what club do you want? Are you even open? to go into different countries or go into different places to, to leave your family behind like these are all things that you have to take in consideration mm -hmm. to to go after a dream because it's not easy yeah i think obviously that perspective is the key it's like how open am i and like how defined am i by one rejection kind of like one one thing and it's like that's what's incredible it's like was that probably in that moment when you released that kind of that first big smack in the face rejection that it's like like you know kind of that suffering and it's that real tester of who you are yeah honestly like i've i always had to like in my in my time at united i've always had to fight mm -hmm. I've, i was always like the underdog mm -hmm. i was never the guy that was the best talent i was never the guy that was like uh oh kenji's gonna play in the first team you know i was never that guy i was that guy that was like work had to work harder than everybody else to get that opportunity I had to stay an extra I had to do more like I really felt that as well you know like I really I really experienced that and going up every age group it's like I want to get to the under 12s I want to get to the under 13s I want to get to the 14s I want to get to the 16s I want to get to the age and every time I made it you know I made it I made it I made it I made it I did it I worked I did it I did it I did it and now it's like I didn't and it was like oh my days like how could, how yeah. didn't I? Like, I was, I was beating myself up from it. I was like, I'm good enough. I could have done it. Like, what should I have done? Should I have stayed? I should have done this. Should I have done that? Oh, that training session. And you start to question yourself, you know? And that doubt started to really show up in my life. Mm -hmm. I started to doubt in my life. Like, I started to think, like, am I making the right decision in this? Am I making the right decision in my, in, in where I'm living? Mm -hmm. Like, it was so, like, it was like all these things. And, and even just anybody that is listening to this right now, like, I'm I'm a big believer in in the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So if you're gonna if you're going to uh, doubt yourself in football, you'll doubt yourself in life. If you're not if you're not gonna be if you're not gonna give your all in football, you're not gonna give your all in your relationships. Mm -hmm. That's just how how life works because like that's what that's how I've like seen my life to go and see my life to be. So so yeah, to answer your question, like perspective is the key to it.
mm-hmm. the key to everything. Yeah, it's mad that it's it's like that. Obviously, that ego. So obviously, a lot of people, you know, obviously defining ego for again because we use it differently. Is ego is not obviously how 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 you know confident or how egotistical you are, but it's very much how you see yourself is the definition of ego. And so it's like how you're saying that it's that cooperation with it. It's how do I work with that where I don't have doubt and so that I can approach that on the pitch, off the pitch. And it's that strength in your ego to go, I see myself as this strong, not one failure is going to you know, affect me. This is, you know, this is who I am regardless of what's happened externally. And so again, that it's a, a weird thing to say, but your strength in your ego is vital as obviously. And that comes with the perspectives. But then what was it like at, um, at Swansea going there? And now how did you deal with that facing what gone on at United? So I had so much hunger inside of me. Mm-hmm. I had so much passion. I had so much desire there. Like I went into that first training session, like I'd give everything in that. And I wanted to really make a statement, you know, in that session. I wanted to, to get my respect from my teammates. I wanted to get the respect from the coaches. You know, I've come from United. Like I'm going to have to, you know, the guy from United, I'm going to have to show up of who I am, you know, so I really, I I was really on that, I was thinking about that, I was like, I'm just going to give my all, I've got so much energy inside of me to go and prove uh, to them and prove to myself that I am good enough, you know, so, so that was really, really massive and, you know, what I can remember from, from moving from United to, to Swansea or even that time was literally moving from boy to man, it was literally from like a kid going to now I'm going to have to pay my own bills now I'm going to have to you know provide for myself I'm going to have to cook I'm going to have to clean I'm going to have to do certain things and and it's these responsibilities that you don't realize until you move out out of home you know until you move out of your home environment you know and and these are these are the things that really make and shape you and it really made and shaped me like I experienced so many lonely days I experienced a lot of downs I experienced a lot of times where you know football's not really going that well and I start to go and distract myself with things that weren't really doing me any good you know I used to gamble a lot I used to go out a lot I used to drink a lot you know like these things that I started to really do to try and fill that void you know fill that void inside of me and I just started to realize like I don't want to feel this anymore you know, like I don't want to feel this, what I'm feeling anymore. And it really got to a point where I, I didn't know what I was chasing anymore. You know, like I ended up making my Premier League debut. I ended up um, making so many memories there. Like I had an amazing five years there. But it was like looking back now and looking at who I was back then, it was like I never really enjoyed it. I never really embraced that moment, you know, of making that Premier League debut. Like, looking back at it now, like, I'm, my best friend was on the bench. He experienced that with me. My my fiancé was in the crowd having a panic attack. Like, all these things were happening. My parents were there and their little brother, like, looking, looking at me saying, that's my brother. Like, all these things, like, I could have experienced in such more such a more bigger way but it was like all right I'm on to the next like Mm -hmm. where where are we gonna go from here you know Mm -hmm. so it was like it was like really like what I would say to myself back then is like really live in the moment you know embrace Mm -hmm. the moments and 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 yeah I hope that answers the question brother yeah I think the presence presence is so amazing isn't it like it, it that presence to to everything is that gratitude in the present moment and in a way I always find it really kind of ironic and it it it's itself but when you you're present it also becomes, and like you zoom into the present moment, it also becomes like a bigger picture because you're seeing the whole thing as one moment and it's like, wow, I'm here. And it's such an incredible thing. Um, Talk to me about kind of, like you said, those distractions of gambling, going out. What, and you, you, you know, that feeling of that emptiness and that numbness. Why, obviously you went to them in that place of distraction and stuff. What, what were you avoiding in that time? I was like, that's an amazing question, by the way. I feel like I was avoiding myself. I was avoiding how I really felt. You know, I was trying, I was, I feel like I was living a life that wasn't really me. Mm-hmm. You know, I was living a life that I was listening to to other people around me. I was easily influenced that would create me to do things that I don't really desire to do. 
it's like, it's really like, I didn't really know who I was. It was really that identity. Like that is the, the key. And once I really saw that in me, like the biggest thing is like being aware of it. Like, like even me thinking back to the Kenji that I used to be, it's like, I was normal. Like life was sweet. Like, yeah, I'm cool, man. Like everything's going the way like it's supposed to go. Like, yeah, it's cool. But I would be triggered so fast by something if I felt disrespected if I felt like the coach was on me if I felt like oh I'm not playing this weekend like I'm gonna go and show that I'm angry I'm gonna go and right after the ball like I'm gonna show him that I'm angry rather than really looking at myself and thinking to myself like what can I do in my control right now to be the best that I can be like I was letting outside circumstances control how I how I acted mm -hmm. you know and I wanted that to and I kind of started to see that I started to see that and the biggest wake up call for me was when I lost my fiance now so when she decided to to leave and that's when I really asked myself like what is it that I want what is it that I that I <laughs> that I who who is it that I want to be mm -hmm. you know it was like such a massive wake up call it was like this is not the Kenji that that uh, lives inside of me you know so so it was really like that self discovery it was really like getting to know who i am and yeah that's really made me the person that i am today honestly like figuring out them things was that your rock bottom in a way yeah it was really was like and and in these in these like places where you do see yourself like i felt it was normal you know, I'm going gamble, like, it's sweet, like, it's, you know, I wasn't losing, I felt like I wasn't losing big money, I was like, yeah, like, I'm just going for a bit of a laugh, I'm going to fit, to, to just go and enjoy myself, like, it wasn't even a, a thing, like, I felt, I feel like I was craving a, a feeling, I was looking for a feeling that I couldn't get, and I could only get that playing football, I could only get that by you know, by scoring goals. So I wanted to create that feeling of scoring goals in this mm -hmm. way. You know, when that ball's going around and that roulette, I was like, <sighs> you know, it's like, yeah. it's like that's that, that feeling, that's the only way I can kind of describe it. Is it, it's like that dependency, I guess it's an addiction to stimulation that is external. And so you've then in that moment lost the power of yourself and who you are because you can't create that and like, again, I go back to this quote so often, but all of man's sufferings come from the inability to sit quietly in a room alone. And it's like, if you can find that within yourself in those quiet moments to just be proud of yourself, to find that excitement from whatever it is, it's it's so powerful. Um, and then it's kind of like, you, you, I, wanna, I wanna go deep, I wanna go deep into this time because I think there are so many people, especially at this moment, and again, I don't know if you've seen England gone into another national lockdown, it's all obviously very difficult times for a lot of people. And in these like you know, times of the most suffering, and it's so, so difficult, that's when you kind of found, again, obviously not at the time, but you, looking back, you find that inner strength, you find that inner resilience to say, this is where I can go. Now this is who I am. This is what I want. It's, so it's like that hope, don't you think? Like it's that hope of this moment will come for me. Um, and that pain is okay. And it's not like, it's seen as always a bad thing to fail. It's always a bad thing to be depressed. It's a bad thing to be all like, you know, to not be feeling okay. But there are so many incredible things and, you know, book and reading obstacle is the way. It's talking about how, and this is an incredible thing, and you'll 100% you'll probably see this in your own thing, you've learned for yourself, is that it said that they did a study on elite athletes recently and that ones that had overcome massive obstacles, especially big injuries, found a massive increase in desire to give to others and to find more authenticity in their life. And would you say that you've seen a similar kind of story that you've learned for yourself in your story in that moment? Wow, honestly, I just got goosebumps as you said that. Like, it really is that. It's in them lowest points where you feel like hopeless, you feel helpless, and it's like, that is the reason why I created what I've created. That's the reason why I started my business because it's like, I needed it, mm -hmm. you know? I needed this. Like, that is why I created the environment of the On The Ball Squad because it's something that I felt that I needed. Mm -hmm. And for you to just share that there, like, 
uh, reiterated the fact of that's what you know doing it like that and even just to go back in into that time and, and the and the time that people are facing right now and we're all facing it you know it's 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 really just honestly like one big thing that I used to do was compare myself mm-hmm. I used to really compare myself to to the people around me so it was like all right I'm gambling but I'm not losing as much as him all right, I'm drinking, but they're doing it way more than me. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm going out, but they're going out every day. I'm only going out on Saturday. You know, it's like I'm comparing myself to that. Like they're way worse than me. But it's like you've got to not look at any other person but yourself because everybody else is experiencing something completely different. Mm-hmm. But the thing that you're experiencing, you've got to ask yourself, like what would the best version of you do? How would he show up? How would he act? Who would he be around? What would he say? What would he wear? You know, it's that it's that sort of power that lives inside of you that can come out. Like it's that it's it's like what are you feeding inside of you? We all have a good side, a bad side, but where what are you feeding? Which side are you feeding? Like I'm um, I'm 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 a Christian. You know, I believe I believe in God. And, and Jesus is, is, a, is my savior. And what I know is that the one that lives in, and the Bible says that the one that lives inside of you is stronger that lives in the world, mm-hmm. you know? And that is such a powerful statement because it's like, stop looking at the world for satisfaction. Look within yourself. Mm-hmm. The peace is in you. It's not in, it's not in football. <laughs> it's ups and downs. It's not in girls. It's not in nights out. It's not in gambling. Like, they're not the things that are going to fuel you, you know, it's the things that you've got to look within yourself. And that's that, that was such a like wake up call for me where I was like, I've got to be happy with who I am, regardless of being a footballer or not. It's like judging yourself by your own standards. That like, that's, that's all there is. Exactly that. That's, exactly that. that. Uh, and so going down again, more positive giving route now, um, looking at obviously what you've created, you've got your podcast, you've got On The Ball Squad and the On The Ball Planners, um, which again, are brilliant. But how do you now, because of all that and looking at what you've created, how do you see your life introspectively? Because obviously it's so important, but how do you, how do you approach it? How do you see it? How do you go about create, like, you know, creating that perspective inwardly? Wow. Um, that's a really, that's a really nice question. I absolutely love that question. <laughs> and and you know what? Honestly, it's not easy. You know, it's not easy. It comes with responsibility, you know, because I've realised that I'm not doing it for myself. You know, it's not for me. Sometimes when I don't feel like coming on on live, sometimes when I feel, don't feel like showing up, sometimes when I think, oh, I've got a lead on the ball squad, but I've, I'm going through a hard time right now, but I've got to find the strength uh, to do it. You know, it's not easy. But what I do know is that God continues to strengthen me. He continues to give me the wisdom. He continues to show me that what I'm supposed to be doing, where I'm supposed to be, where I'm supposed to go. Like literally we had three games in the Christmas period in a, in a week. And, you know, I'm still creating things as the on the ball squad's getting a massive up, upgrade. Like I'm still creating things for, for others. And it's not always easy. You know, it's not always easy, but what I do do is I set myself up for success. And what I mean by that is the way you wake up. The way I used to wake up, the way probably most of you wake up, is you wake up, go on your phone. Mm-hmm. And that is the biggest mistake that I used to make. <laughs> like, I, li- I can remember, like, going, going to Swansea and... Uh... <laughs> This is so funny. I used to get out of bed, used to go into, run into the bathroom, brush my teeth, put my clothes on, run to the car, get in the car, 10 minutes, I knew the way, and get to training. And you're coming in in that rushed environment, that rushed place. Mm-hmm. But now, I'm waking up every single day, an hour before. Mm-hmm. And what I do is, I do my journaling, I do my gratitude, I do what I really desire to get out of the day. Like, who do I want to, who do I need to be today to make today great? Mm. How is today going to be great? And I really sit myself, I really sit in that place. It's like, God, what would you want me to do today? 
And now I'm living with a certain purpose, whereas just going on your phone, you might be triggered by something. Now I'm going on my phone, nothing can trigger me. Mm -hmm. Nothing can trigger me. It's like, what am I grateful for in this moment? All right, I'm grateful for my fiance. What about your fiance are you grateful for? Mm -hmm. What about your children are you grateful for? Oh, the feelings that they give me, why? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like feeling it and embracing it and embodying it because you show up different. When you're in that state, like, like you show up to, to, to football different, you go into things and when adversity and when things hit you, you're prepared for them. Mm -hmm. Like I listen to podcasts on the way to training. I listen to, I read, I read, I have my time to read in the morning. And it's just these things that really can set you up for the day rather than just waking up by accident, rather than just hoping for a good day. Oh, I hope that tomorrow will be better. It's like set yourself up for that. And that's what I, that's what I do. And that's why um, that's why I have created what I've created from that place, you know, mm -hmm. because that's that's the only way uh, it would be possible for me. I mean, even setting yourself up even earlier, do you go to bed early enough? Like, that's the thing, again, of people, I know so many people that will go, oh, I'll just go to bed at midnight, one o'clock, because it's, it's seen as normal. It's seen as that's when everyone goes to bed. And it's like, when, like, you know, you go back 10, 15 years and nine o'clock's normal. And it's like, like, hold up. But it's, it's always bad. And I love the depth to your gratitude. I think that's such an easy thing is that I've known and I, I myself have told so many people and done it myself where it'd be like, okay, what am I grateful for today? Three things every day, gone through like loads of phases where that's so important to me. But do you go into the depth of asking yourself, why you do I feel, feel grateful? It. Exactly. It's feeling it. It's not just saying, oh, I'm grateful for the sun. Mm -hmm. It's like, what about that? Mm -hmm. Like, why are you grateful for that? I'm why like are you that. grateful for the opportunity that you've got at, at your club that you're at right now? Mm -hmm. Why are you grateful for your family? Mm -hmm. Like, what about them are you grateful for? Because that is the feeling that you've got to, to go with, you know? You've got to embody that. Uh, no, I, lo I love that so much. And then, like, again, picking up your phone this first thing you look at in your day is now determined by what someone else gives you. And if someone's let, given you a bad message the night before, someone's whatever, you're now in the hands of whoever's controlling what's coming up on your phone. And that is the most like vulnerable thing, I think, in terms of losing yourself for that day, you can possibly do. So like 100% agree. And then what I've, what's so obvious in the audience, like will obviously see this, is your depth. And I want to use the word as well, sensitivity, because it's seen as such a vulnerable, weak word in a way for people, for a male, again, a top professional footballer to have sensitivity is a really like, you know, weird thing. But at the same time, I think you have your sensitivity to have the awareness, to see life, to have all these different things. Do you think that sensitivity, obviously, or, you know, do you agree that you've got the sensitivity and the depth, but how do you think that's linked to what you've gone through? you know, the different sufferings, the different parts of your journey, and, you know, where would you say, you know, would it be the suffering and stuff like that? Honestly, like, it's it's through a lot of things. You know, I really appreciate the words, by the way. It really does mean a lot. Like, it, it, it really touched my heart that uh, for you to see me like that because it's something that, um, that, that is really, it's a really big compliment to me. <laughs> um, you know, Honestly, there's so many different factors of this. You know, like my fiance has just been amazing. Honestly, like seeing her life, the things that she's been through, the things that she's created from, from the mess that she was actually in. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just these things that inspire me, man. She inspires me every day to be better. And, you know, it's something that's like, not really spoke, spoke about that much. Your partner. Mm -hmm. Your partner is vital. I love it. Your partner is vital. Your life partner is the... Like, I even read in the Bible the other day about how um, how that is God's favour in your life to give you a wife. Mm -hmm. wow. And and it touched me differently. It touched me like, mm. wow, like God has favour on my life to give me my wife. Because your wife is somebody that's going to experience the things that you experience with her. Mm. It's like your experience of this in football right now, but she's feeling it the same way, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I only learned this recently. 
Like it's only recently where I found this out. Like I used to kind of block my emotions out because I didn't want her to see me weak. Mm -hmm. I didn't want her to see me um, not not strong, not be uh, protected, and and mm -hmm. I want to be that sub that that person for her. But what I realized the most is that she's doing life with me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, that is the biggest blessing there is. And it's something that, like I shared, like it's something that we don't speak about enough. You know, your partner is so important. Who you're with every single day mm -hmm. is so important. It's mm -hmm. so important. And if you are in, a, in an amazing relationship, cherish that. If you're not, you know, be the person that's going to attract the person that's going to that's gonna be that. And also... You know, it's so important who you surround yourself with. It's so important who you surround yourself with. The quickest way to assess yourself is just look at the five people closest to you. Mm -hmm. Look at the five people closest to you and that's you. Mm -hmm. And and like that, when I first heard that, that quote, I was like, oh my days, that's actually me. <laughs> I was like, right, that's actually me. So I know that there's someone listening to this that's feeling like, oh my days, this is actually me. And this is how you assess yourself. And... Mm -hmm. That's how you have to see yourself. And then you can kind of see, right, who can I be around more? Mm. Where can I get, my, where can I spend my time? You know, time is the most valuable thing that you can have. And, and that right now is, 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 is seen in the life that we live today, you know, through COVID, through everything that's going on in the world. Like time is unbelievable, you know, to spend time with your family, to spend time with your loved ones, to spend time with everything because, you know, life can be taken away from you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. but what have you done to get to yourself to you know i'm going a bit off topic here <laughs> but but it is but it is definitely it's definitely to answer your question it's definitely linked to what i have uh gone through for sure in my yeah. life and what i've seen i think to make that connection is i think again the environment is so important to cultivating the depth the awareness everything that you want in your life to be the person you want to be but at the same time you choose your environment and I think that's what people like, oh yeah, but like, this is my environment. Like I can't get out of this. I live with this person. I live in this building. Um, you know, all these different things. Like, I'm at this football club. Like one of my biggest things is that my best friends I've created are the people I listen to on podcasts. I want David Goggins to be one of my best friends. I want the Dalai Lama to be another one of my best. They have no clue who I am. <laughs> but, it, but if I'm listening to them an hour this. a week, that's like having one friend of mine for an hour a week. So those are my circle that I get my inspiration, that's where I learn. And so it's like, I've created that for myself, is like, I live on my own, and obviously I go to my, like, I go to train every day. And so obviously you don't have as much time to go and meet, nor, like, you know, the people you wanna meet. So I'm gonna go in and create the environment that I want, sat at home in the way that I can. Obviously technology is, you know, incredible blessing at the moment to be able to do that. But again, you create that yourself in your environment, and there is no excuses, I think, in that way to say I'm not around the people I want to be because obviously like you said Denzel Washington he hit home with that <laughs> and that was it, it it's so true and it was like yeah it's a, the environment is a brilliant answer to that sensitivity so I love that no oh, wow man honestly what you just shared there is so vital it's so so key you can literally create a friend in a in in getting to know somebody on their podcasts yeah, yeah. Exactly. Honestly, like it's amazing. It honestly is amazing what you just shared. Like everybody listening to this, like exactly, or even reading in, their book. Take that in. Like I read mm. Nelson Mandela's Long Walk to Freedom, and I feel like that's my boy now. <laughs> 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 like I know his whole life, nine hundred pages through. Like that's my. <laughs> I've been there no. through him. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. I fully feel you with this for sure, brother. Honestly, yeah. I feel you. So taking a little, you know, different different path now. I want to go. I want to take this to another level as well, and this is this is something that I don't think is done enough on podcasts in terms of the trust and the openness and the authenticity. Right now in your life, obviously you're playing football. You know you've got, obviously got your environment, family wise. You're pr pursuing and progressing off the pitch with these ideas and these projects that are brilliant. What are your dreams now? And at the same time, go into after. What are your what are your weaknesses and fears at this moment in time? Like to be open and raw when, you know, I think again, you could say an, out, an outsider looking in would say, oh, Kenji's got it all comfortable. Kenji's got it sorted. He, you know, he's doing all these things, blah, blah, blah. Whether they knew your story or they know your day-to-day life or not, it's now, 
okay, what am I still going for? But at the same time, what do I still have to work on? Wow. I, you know, honestly, I absolutely love this question. And I have many dreams, you know. I honestly, like, I've realized that my, my life is not my own. You know, after living my life, uh, giving my life to Christ, like, I've realized that when I'm stood before God, you know, you can say your creator, whatever you, you may believe. But for me, when I'm stood before God, I want to be emptied out. I want to stand before him and say, I've given my, all my talents. I've given everything that I've got inside of me to the world. And that's kind of how I want to live my life on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, like, what can I do now to really impact somebody's life? What can I do now? Did I live today? Like, it's these questions that I continue to ask myself, like, and, and, and that is like how, how I'm living my life. And, and that comes with a lot of fears, you know, mm -hmm. is it enough? Is it enough? Am I doing enough? You know, like that is something that I'm, I'm not struggle. I don't like the word struggle, but that's something that I'm challenged by at the moment. Mm -hmm. I'm challenged by like, am I doing enough with the time that I've got on my hands? Mm -hmm. You know, like, am I managing that time? Like, am I doing that? And, and that is something that is ever evolving. You know, I'm, I want to continue to grow. I want to continue to be that next level version of myself. And I know that there's so much more to come so much more to come but just to go into the the weaknesses and fears you know one of my fears is wow <laughs> like one of one of my biggest fears is not making making it to what my talent can mm -hmm. that is one of my biggest fears you know like not not playing at the level that i feel like i could not reaching your potential. Not reaching my potential. Like, that is one of my biggest fears. My biggest, f like, like, that's something that, that I'm working on on a day-to-day -day basis. Like, to not really, like, I don't really think about it too often, but that is a real, that is a fear of mine. Like an underlying kind of, and I, I mean, if we go, I, I, I've got to ask these questions. I've got to be able to reflect that myself. It's that, you know, for myself, is that not being good enough? And, you know, that is that thing about not reaching your potential is, am I ever going to be good enough for how, you know, how I think I can go, where people have told me I can go, what all these different things. And it's like that thing saying, I can find wholeness in myself and at my wholeness day in, day out, I'm producing my best. Because only when you're whole within yourself can you give everything to the world. But if you're always whole, like thinking that you're not good enough, you're never a hole in yourself because there's something that is always you're striving for that isn't there. And that's why, like, it's obviously the whole thing is you must have complete love within yourself and love for yourself before you can give it to someone else. Yeah, honestly, that is that is key. key the key what you just shared there is love. Mm. Like, love conquers everything. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't know what to do, just love. Oh. Honestly, like if you don't know what to do, just love. Mm -hmm. Love you. Like it says, love your neighbor as yourself. Like mm -hmm. love them. Can you love in your heart? Can you love your enemy? Can you still show up with respect for them and love them for who they are as a human, not for what they did to you? You know, it's like all these things like that I've really realized that I, that I honestly, like when I give my life to Christ, it was like, I just want to love everyone. Mm -hmm. How can I love, Lord? Like, what can I do to love? And that is, and he continues to show me how looking at Jesus's life, like makes me see like how he loved, mm -hmm. what he did. It was like, I want to have that sort of love. How can I love people like that? That's, that's so powerful, man. It, for me, it's that unifying thing between people. It's the one thing that connects us all. It's the one thing that is intuitive to every human being. No matter what place you're in, no matter where you've come from, it's an intuitive source within you as a human to love. And so, like you said, love beats and like overrides everything else in the world. And like, that is such an important message. And it's like, how often do you hear this in footballers and in athlete conversations talking about love? And it's, it's just the most powerful thing. I just want to add something onto that as well. You know, like, just to give people a little bit of insight to, 
to, to, to this and that they can kind of relate to it as well. If you're going into the gaffer, mm-hmm. you're vex. You're fuming, <laughs> you're not playing. Yeah. You don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. Go in there with love. Go in there with love because then you cannot go wrong. You can also, listen, going in there with love can also mean that you don't agree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> going in there with love means you got, like, don't get it twisted with what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I just mean go from a place of not not your ego talking. The amount of times that I've, that I've gone into the gaffer's office and said, why am I not playing? Why am I not this? And I want to share a little story with with uh, with the people people listening also for you. Like the other day, three games ago, I said I said you know what I'm gonna to go to the coach. And I sat with myself. I prayed. I said what? How should I go? What should I say? And I asked my mentor. I said uh, what should I do? You know I'm not getting my opportunity that I feel like I deserve. Like what can I do? And I shared with myself like I just want an opportunity. So I said to him, I said to myself, I'm not going to ask him why I'm not playing. I'm going to ask him to give me an opportunity. So I said to, so I went in there with that intention. I said, I know what he's going to say. I know what he's going to, how he's going to react. Cause I, I've, I've kind of seen how he manages certain things. And I'm going to go in there and tell him to give me an opportunity. So I went in there, knocked on his door and I said, Gaffer, can I have a word please? He said, yeah, come on. Uh, so we go into the, to the back door. I sit down and I say to him, Gaffer, give me an opportunity. Give me one opportunity. And he said, uh, and I knew what he's going to say. He was like, listen, you're working hard. You're doing so well. Continue to do what you're doing. The opportunity's there. You're going to, I know that you're going to take it when it comes and blah, 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 blah. Uh, Right now, it's my decision. You know, I decide if you're going to play or not. I don't know what the team's going to be yet, but uh, da, 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 da. But you need to work on your this. You need to work on that. You need to work on this. And he started to name all the things that I need to work on, right? But I'm triggered now. I'm triggered. I'm thinking, you muppet. Like, all these things are going through my mind, right? You're just, you're gassing all these things. <laughs> but I went in the intention to give me an opportunity. So what did I go back to? I didn't go back in with anything to, to, to reply. I said to him, I hear you, gaffer, but just give me an opportunity. One opportunity. I ended up getting my opportunity three games ago and I scored. You know, and and I've played and I played the next game after that against Porto. We played then a cup game. I scored again. So I've got um, two goals in three games. And it's just I just wanted to share that with you guys. Like even when you're triggered, even when you think he's gassing, even when you think people around you are gassing, the, the like your friends, the people like your teammates might be gassing to you reply with them with love Mm -hmm. reply with them like with what you desire to be treated like treat them as with like how you want to be treated and and i just really wanted to share that little story mad i love it wow that's that's beautiful obviously congratulations but that's beautiful that story um obviously you've talked about it quite a bit but how has god and your obviously relationship with it developed over your incredible journey um has it kind of come in and out has how has it kind of you know developed down that and what for people obviously in those places where it's difficult right now to you know to see that or um you know what what's it been like for you and how much has it given you honestly like for me personally i've only become aware of him recently Mm -hmm. lockdown has been massive Mm -hmm. Uh, really asking myself these deeper questions where are we going what's life you know it's really asking these deep questions and God continues to reveal himself to me and looking back at how it all started it all started with like my dad shared with me something real powerful and he said when you're ready to see you will see when you're ready to hear you will hear and that there I was like Mm -hmm. okay now I want to see now I want to hear and what actually happened was um, one of my cousins, uh, like literally my best friend, he lived with me when I went on loan to Ado Den Haag. Like he was like, he lived with me also when I was with, um, that he came over a lot. He was like, he came a lot when my dad was playing. Like he was always there. He was like my best friend. You yeah. know, he looked after, I wanted to be like him. He had like <laughs> mad waves. He had mad waves do <laughs> rag. Bro, I wanted to be like him. <laughs> So like he was someone that I really look up to 
And it got to a point in his life where he had he had cancer. And through that time, like it was, I saw it was such a hard time for him, but he always had joy in his heart. He always had joy. We were always laughing together. We were always joking. Like we all, even at the lowest of the lows, we were still Chemo is horrible, mm -hmm. uh, but it was still like we were we were uh, we were boys, man. We were really boys, and I can remember like when it really went really fast. You know, he decreased really really fast, and I went out to go and see him, and he actually passed away. He sadly passed away, and in that time, like he literally was there. I saw a body. I saw a body, my, my cousin was there, but he wasn't there. So I was like, wait, where's he gone? What is this? What is this body? Mm -hmm. What, like, huh? Mm -hmm. Like, there's a body here. And I started to ask them deeper questions. And God revealed himself in that way to me where it's like, listen, this body is nothing. This body expires. Who are you? Where are you going? What is it? And it made me really deep it, like in that pain, in that suffering at that time, it, there was peace there. I felt peace in my heart. And I was like, huh? How is that? Mm -hmm. Like, why? Why do I feel this? And I experienced this same this um, experience with my fiance now. Mm -hmm. And she, she was there as well through that time. And, and we both saw, saw him like literally pass away in front of us. And it was just so... It was a surreal experience. Like God's presence was really there and, and, and mm -hmm. I could feel that. And, and ever since that day, I really seeked him. Mm -hmm. I really started to ask the questions like, if you're real, show me then. Do it then. Let me see it then. And then I started to really feel it. And I was like, wow. And now I'm opening up the Bible and it's like, it's speaking to my life. It's speaking to what I'm going through. It's like me in the situation that I'm in right now, it's like what I've realized is to not lean on my own understanding, you know? And it, it, and when I read that verse, it was like, oh my days, it's literally speaking to my life, like trust in you. Like, why am I trusting in, in man? Why am I trusting in, in these things? Like I need to trust in the creator, mm -hmm. you know? Whatever you guys may think that may believe it to be, like for me, it's God. Um, and, and that is, and that is what, how it all kind of started. Like it's becoming aware. It's becoming aware of him. He lives in you mm. because we're all made of the image of God. Like that is, that is it. Like we're not just flesh. Like mm. there's something deeper than that. And, and yeah, I really started to ask deeper questions, started to ask, and he started to give me the answers. It's, it's literally like, it's as simple as that, but it wasn't as simple. Like it made me, it made me really go deep in things and, and he ministered me through other people um, and, and that's kind of how it went, my little story to, to that, that's really. That's incredible. Wow, what a story. Wow, that, that, that's, that's, yeah, that's so deep. I love it. That's, that's incredible. Um, looking back at everything that's kind of gone on, how do you now see your whole journey, the good, the bad, um, and what, you know, what would it, what's it taught you in a way? Like what are the values that you look back on and go, wow. Honestly, like every experience, everything that I've gone through, like good or bad, has made me who I am. It's made me the person I am today. It's made me uh, appreciate the things that I might not have appreciated back then. Like I can remember being at Swansea and I was like chasing chasing the car, chasing this. And I had it all, you know, I had the S500, I had all that, you know, mm -hmm. but there was still, I didn't, it, it didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. It didn't really, I wasn't feeling good in myself. I'm happier now than ever, you know? And now I realize coming out to Madeira, waking up to the sun, waking up to the sea, living in an apartment, um, like out here, it's just changed my whole perspective on life. I never realized that I could live my life like this while being a footballer mm -hmm. you know it's just so crazy when you think about it. it's like i had in my mind like this is the only way and i just saw it completely open up being out here where it's like wait i'm not just a footballer i'm not just a footballer like there's way too there's way more to me than that and i'm not gonna value me as a person like something that really triggers me something that really gets me angry is that you have more value in what you got to say with what level you play at 
and 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 I'm thinking like, how is that even a thing? Like, how is that so? So because you've you're playing in the prem, and someone from League One has something to say, like you would listen to the guy in the prem, but wouldn't listen to the guy in League One because of where they are. And it's just these things like it's triggered me so much because you never know where you can get the inspo from, where you can get the. Um, motivation from and especially it's all to do with your own life Mm -hmm. like it's all to do with your own life like what makes you happy might not necessarily make me happy you know but it's identifying what makes you happy and doing more of that like I've realized that football is not gonna be my overall happiness because it's full of ups and downs and I don't want my happiness to be full of ups and downs. So I'm going to do more of the things that make me happy. And the things that make me happy is going for dinner with my fiance, having deep chats there, being with my family. So what am I going to do? Do more of them experiences, mm-hmm. you know, rather than going out and spending so and such and such on tables. I'm going to now, uh, I'm going to now be with my family, you know, get a flight for them to come over. You know, it's like, it's like, where, where are you at in your life? And what are you doing to fill what you want to do in your life? And what you, what makes you happy? Like, do more of that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put out a challenge right now. Just come up with it on the spot to everyone listening to make a list, make it on like a big landscape thing, or just list them down your values. And like, for example, I remember doing that this summer in lockdown and going back to like, for example, my, my connection, I wanted deep connections like these conversations. I valued hard work, I valued honesty, giving, all those things, and going out and being myself, that authenticity, self-expression, exactly kind of, and it's led me to, you know, have these conversations. And so to everyone kind of listening, when you, you know, put this down, whatever, write your values up and kind of in a way, honestly reflect, am, am, I, am I living these values? Am I actually backing them up? And, you know, like you said, the fulfill like you know those things the cars the night outs whatever yeah they'll bring you that you know momentary bit of dopamine bit of approval bit of satisfaction whatever but they go quicker than anything and there's no lasting kind of joy I don't think that the word that always gets me is they don't bring you joy like real ecstatic joy like this is so weird right but I would prefer a cold shower over a night out <laughs> freezing cold shower because you know that feeling when you're standing by a cold chat and you don't want to do it. Like, and I'm, like I get into them all the time. And I don't want to do it. And then I do it and I come out and I'm, I'm running around the room gassing myself. I'm like, like I'm doing this. Night like, out. I'm just wondering what everyone else is doing. Which girls are looking at you? Am I looking good? Is my hair right? You know, how much, you know, how much am I going to spend tonight? Whatever, all this, like, rub, like, you just don't need to be thinking about that's not fulfilling. But that joy of finishing a cold shower is just that's that's fulfilling joy it really truly it. is i love it i absolutely love it and 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 i just want to add on to that as well like it's so it's it's everybody has their own thing mm-hmm. you know everybody has their own thing and like for me there's no more joy than seeing somebody's life change mm-hmm you know and that is like even just going down to like uh my one-on-one coaching that i did and the the on the ball squad for example Mm -hmm. like seeing their progression seeing who who they become is like for me the ultimate fulfillment i literally just spoke to somebody then it was like that message there was like scoring a goal Mm. you know what i mean and i don't know what it is for anybody listening to this i don't know what that is for you but if it is nights out if it is girls if it is these things these are temporary fulfillments like mm-hmm. what do you really want to do and create for yourself that's going to bring you that that yeah. satisfaction that you got for yourself mm-hmm. because because like that is what you have to go and do and everybody has it in their in their in their heart to go and do like i spoke to to one of the boys at swansea ali yeah and he started the 731 club. He's right? coming on next week, right? <laughs> and I said, I, I love that. I love that. I absolutely love that you got in contact with him. He's, he's, he's an amazing guy. He's actually got number 46 as well. I got number 46 oh, at Swansea. So he's, he's took over. He's took over. I like that. <laughs> but, um, but honestly, bro, like, um, um, I've lost, I've lost my thought, thought of pros, process then. Where am I? Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Yeah. So, so Ali, I spoke to him and I was like, it's been placed on your heart to do, so do mm-hmm. it. Yeah. 
Whatever is placed in your heart right in this moment as we speak, do it. Mm-hmm. Because it's not in anybody else's heart. Mm-hmm. It's not in mine. Like, otherwise I would do it. So if it's on your heart to do, do it. If that's starting a pod, your own podcast. If that's going to go and speak to your dad that you've not spoke to in a while. If that's going to speak to your mum that you've not spoke to in a while. Like, go and do it. Whatever's on your heart right now, do it. I just wanted to share that. Like, 100%. If... And, and I'm going to add on to that one more thing. When you feel scared to jump, jump. Jump. I love it. 100%. That's, that's, like, that is the biggest, I think, value in anything. If there's something on your mind, anything, whatever, like you said, do it. Jump. Do it. Honest, honestly, I was so scared, like, frightened, frightened of calling myself a mindset coach. Mm-hmm. I was frightened to tell my story. I was so scared to say that I used to gamble. Mm-hmm. I was so scared of these things. But I've realized that if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be who I am today. Exactly. You know, exactly. so whatever you're scared of, whatever you want to do, that is probably going to lead you to your purpose. A hundred million percent. And then to round off this incredible question uh, one we're asking at the end of every episode what makes you more than a footballer what makes you more than an athlete what makes you human wow i think first and foremost it's for me like i'm i'm the i'm a child of god you know like when we all strip it down to what it really is you know i'm a child of god and that comes with sacrificing your life you know i've realized that i've i've kind of sacrificed my what i desire for what god desires for me and that's how i kind of live my life now where it's like i want to make him proud i want to make him like i'm not playing for the coach i'm not playing for 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 the fans like i'm playing for god and that's what brings so much confidence it brings so much like ease to my life where it's like he loves me regardless if I'm a footballer or not he loves me regardless of if if um, I get this contract or not you know and and to be more a footballer it be, it comes with perspective it comes to realize that football is gonna come to an end <laughs> one day you know it's coming to an end like that is just a fact like you can't do it for the rest of your life so if you're if you place your identity as a footballer, it's going to get taken away from you. And that's why there's so much high rates on on uh, gambling issues after money issues after your career, uh, divorce rates up sky high. It's like, why are these things happening? It's because they don't know who they are. So what I want to advise everybody on this podcast, I think like it's been so amazing. Uh, all the insight that you shared as well like it's honestly been a privilege to to be on here today but i want to tell everybody to ask themselves who they are what do they want and why do you want it they're the three questions that you gotta ask yourself right now i love it i love it i'm so i'm so so grateful for for this, this conversation for the words you've given like you know the inspiration that whether it's tens of people or just a few that have inspired been inspired by it that's the beauty of having this conversation i'm so grateful to to have heard what you've been you know what you've said and be a part of it so thank you very much man now honestly it's been it's an absolute pleasure and i absolutely love what you're doing bro uh continue to just shine your light be a light in in what you're doing like i'm following i'm definitely following and any anybody listening to this please like it share it uh share it to somebody that you felt uh should be touched by it because what you're doing is is really inspiring brother so keep it up okay much love thank you very much man much love brother much love